Hello guys, Metsplay here. So we'll be going over Gareth now in this video. So in this one we'll be going over Gareth in battle and then going through his, his passives and then finishing up by seeing how Gareth is in the current JP meta. Without, with that out of the way, let's see how Gareth is in this game. So let's talk Gareth in battle. Gareth is a tank kind of character where his two abilities are more orientated to um, the defensive side of the game. So Gareth's first ability cover allows you to select an ally and they all gain the cover buff. When they have the cover buff active and they are targeted for attack, Gareth will switch places with them and take damage for them instead. So this is for both physical and magical damage and HP attacks as well. So you have to be quite mindful about this when Gareth is covering. Gareth's, uh, Gareth's second ability, Shura Hadori, is a um, first term move where at base form, it increases his evasion by a bit. So that means that if he is targeted for attack, he has a chance to evade it. When you um, use it one time, it gets mastered and becomes Shura Hadori Plus. When it's at that point, that means all physical attacks will be automatically evaded and Gallifrey will retaliate with a counter attack as well. So let's um, show Gallifrey uh, tanking and show you what he's like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover Sh Shantoto here. As you guys can see, Gareth steps in and takes the damage for Shantoto instead. One thing to note about the cover buff is that uh, the cover buff is applied to a character, so you have to be careful about how many buffs they have active at, at that given time. And also, if these characters are too quick, they can exhaust the cover buff too quickly and they might not get the full benefits of the buff. When you when Master uh, after one use, it becomes cover plus. When it's at cover plus, the cover is just AoE, so all uh, party members will be covered, and therefore you can protect them. So as you guys can see here, Galif is now tanking ahead of Waraka, and now, oh, taking HP damage for Shantoto. So it's one thing to be careful of. So now we're going to use Shirahadori and this will increase Galef's invasion by a little bit and attacks can miss. So that's the good thing about it. So now that it's in this plus form, I will now um, counter automatically should I able to dodge an attack. And another great thing about Galif is that because of the way his abilities work, the summon gauge um, charges really quickly with him. So here we are. I'm going to use Shihadori Plus now. And whoops, physical attacks get dodged instantly. No matter what, if they're no more attacks or the HP attacks, Galif can dodge them and counter attack. When it comes to enemies like the Iron Giant, for example, who only use physical attacks, Gareth absolutely destroys him because they can't do anything to him. And that's pretty much Gareth in a nutshell, really. Um, you use Gareth only against bosses who are just physical attackers. Uh, he, can, he can't counter magical attacks, so he's not at full capacity if he's facing a mixed or more magical-oriented oriented boss. But overall, when he is going against a physical attacking boss, Gallif is king and probably the best attack in the game for that purpose. Next up, we'll be talking Gallif and his passives. Let's talk Gallif and his passives. So Gallif does use green crystals and he's got quite um, a good set of passives to be honest. So let's go through them all. So at crystal level 5, he learns Kill Brave Gain, which allows him to gain a small amount of brave after killing an enemy. I think this passive isn't all that great because um, if you're killing enemies, you'll be going through to the next round where your brave will reset. So it's not exactly the most useful passives. 
it's not one I wouldn't equip and I wouldn't I would just leave it alone next up at level 10 is Master Guard Up so when Bailiff uh, masters his ability his defensive power increases this one is good really good for a level 10 it's quite expensive on the CP side at 15 but if both abilities are mastered then Galef does get a good defense buff and it makes him better at his job now next swap is Spirit of Competition which is at level 15 and that grants automatic critical hits when your brave is equal to or exceeds the initial brave and your target's brave is over twice that brave now this one eh, not a fan of this one because the situation is quite um hard to replicate and you don't want to be in a position where your enemy does have a lot of brave because that spells danger that spells that they're going to HP attack and we don't want to be taking damage needlessly. As the game shifts on, it becomes more about taking less HP damage. So this one is quite gimmicky in my opinion and I'm not a real fan of it. Next up is Danger Attack Up and this is at level 25 and this slightly raises the attack power when HP is under 20%. This one is great either. This is like the, the hands-on, nail on perfect passive for Cecil because this was what Cecil lives for is getting his uh, HP down to low levels whilst also being able to do a lot of good things for the party. But I guess this one's kind of okay to use because Gareth can will be taking a lot of HP attacks and if he can't dodge them, um, then at least you can get attack up buff uh, if you get down to dangerous values. This will later on be something that stacks with one of Galif's um, later uh, passives, so it's not all bad. Next up is Cover Light. Uh, Cover Light uh, is at level 30 and it slightly reduces the action delay after using Cover. Now this one is quite good as well because uh, the quicker we get to cover plus, the better we are at just being a shield to the whole party. And this helps out considerably in doing that. Cover already has um, a low action delay, but this makes it even better. So this is one of the ones I think is quite good to have equipped. Because if we're at, at cover plus, that means we're protecting our allies and then putting ourselves in a really good position. Now, next up, after that, at level 35, is HP Damage Guard Up. Now, this one increases Gareth's um, defense after taking HP damage. Uh, once again, it's not the best because we don't want to be taking HP damage. That's not the ideal situation. And you really only will be taking HP damage with Gareth if you just haven't been quick to set up the situation of where um, Cover and Shirahadori are at maximum um, capacity so mm, it's not exactly the best because yeah Galif will be evading and countering there and then and not much room to be taking H3 damage if you know what you're doing and that's probably why it's so cheap it's not the best passive unfortunately so it's one that you either equip when you have nothing else to use your CP on Next one is Blade Block Attack Up, which slightly raises the attack power for one turn after using uh, Blade Block, or um, it translates in Google as Shirahadori, and this one's at level 40. Uh, this one is quite good. Now, I say why, because uh, when you have um, Shirahadori Plus Up, that means that your counters become a lot stronger, and that is really good, because... Um, you'll be able to break enemies quite easily, accumulate brave, and put the party in a fantastic position. So that means all you're doing is being able to um, get easier breaks. And this one is a very good passive to have. It just makes Shira Dori so much better. At 45, this one is Brave Live. And this one prevents break status if your brave is over 50%. This one is good as well. This one is good as well because if you can't um, counter or dodge and the boss like throws up a surprise magical attack, uh, at least Galif doesn't get broken. Like, and that is critical. 
absolutely critical. Uh, not being able to get broken if your brave is above a, a certain value is um, is really good. It is really good. Uh, being able to avoid a, a, a brave break uh, means that, you know, staying down to one, your, t your enemy doesn't get to have that huge break and that gives you time to uh, readjust your strategy and make sure you correct some mistakes that you might have made for the battle. Uh, so this one's quite good too. Finally, at level 50, we've got a grandfather's lifestyle. So this prevents KO if his HP is over 50% and leaves the value at 1. So this one combines well with the danger attack up. So should you survive, at least you then get an attack boost as well. So this one is quite good as well for Galif because sometimes these bosses can spring some scary HP attacks and if... It might catch you by surprise, it could be magical, and it will give you a chance to have kind of being knocked out, but this will prevent that if you're doing it just right. So it's a safety net and a well needed safety net. <laughs> I think this one's like really the um perfect one for Galif. And make sure that your Galif stays alive just in case and you're prepared and allows you to just readjust your strategy and maybe um learn more about the boss. But that's Gareth's passives in a nutshell, and this is all about Gareth. Um Next up, we'll be talking about Gareth in the future, so if you want to stop by, you want to avoid spoilers and whatnot, then now's the time to stop the video. But with that out of the way, I'll be moving on to Gareth in the future. So let's talk Gareth in the current JP meta. So sadly, Gareth fades out completely and becomes a really low tier character. The problem with Galif is that the game becomes more about speed and getting really high scores and Galif does not help you do that because he is quite slow in um, dealing lots of damage. Also characters like Terra, Skull and Vaughn they DPS so quickly that you have no need for a, a tank. And in fact, the tank will just slow you down turns-wise. So Galif ends up fading away into obscurity and never really seeing the light of day. But he hasn't got a level break yet. So um, there's a chance that that level break could switch things around for him. So watch this space. Uh, maybe Galif can turn it around with his level break. He did get an exclusive and we will be going through that because unfortunately I didn't pull his exclusive so I missed out on the fun of being able to see what Galif with an exclusive is like. But let's get into that exclusive and see what it brings to the table and if it helps Galif in any way as it is a fairly new relic. So Galif gets an exclusive called the Defender and let's go through all the effects so what it does is increases shiridori's max uses by one it turns brave attack into brave attack plus when you get the evasion rate up and it increases the potency of the evasion rate it extends the duration of the evasion rate and defense up rate and makes defense up stronger and gives galif a medium max break up for six turns whilst also increasing the power of the counter so overall, a lot of crazy effects as well. It's because the def developers were responding to Galef going so far down the tiers that they didn't need they needed to do something to make him better. And this was it with his weapon. Unfortunately, I didn't pull it to give a um, res representation of how good it is. But from what I can see, it's a lot of nice effects. But a lot of the effects that aren't really necessary. The one that's the most important one is the medium max brave up for me personally because what I find is the issue of Galif is that when you're countering so much your brave just goes up and you don't really there's no real way to get rid of all that brave quite easily so you end up wasting um getting braves and wasting brave breaks so it's not ideal like if there was like an hp attack at the end of it then that would be perfect but maybe that might come with his level break but anyway this is meds play i hope you guys hope you all enjoyed i thank you all as always for watching and i'll see you for the next video bye bye